Hi, hey, welcome everyone, welcome. It is so wonderful to see you all today. It's great, it's so wonderful. I love seeing all y'all. Um, yeah, so today we're going to be kind of doing a live, um, a live recording. Yeah, it's an experiment. Let's see, we, we do have one question here. So have you ever uh, once ever got into a musical? Yes, yes, I, lo I love musicals. I think they're awesome. They are so amazing. One of my earliest musicals would have been like Fiddler on the Roof. I have not seen Avenue Q, but I need to, I need to. Oh, and of course, Cats, Cats, uh, but not not the, like the the film iteration of it because that's that's kind of horrific. Yeah, I kind of hate it. Oh, so when did I start becoming a filmmaker and why? I think I started doing films when I was like 17 or 18. I was just like, hey, I really want to do stuff like I see in the movies, right? So like Star Wars and whatnot were huge influences for me. And so I just started picking up a camera and experimenting a little bit. And like, mind you, my early films were kind of, how do I put this, rough. I'm like super, I'm super happy with how they kind of evolved, of course. Um, you know, like initially I wanted to do narrative, so I focused in on doing like feature film production and everything. And I got in with a local uh, grip company, which uh, grip companies, they essentially provide all the, you know, like equipment on set to set things up. And so I worked in g &E, which is Grip and Electric. So I learned the lighting side first, and then I jumped in uh, camera department and now I direct. But um, I really got into filmmaking because I love telling stories. I love kind of exploring narratives that folks might not traditionally explore. And also, it's just a lot of fun. What is the scariest moment at a con? Oh geez, the scariest moment at a con that I've ever had, it would have been the uh, chlorine bombs over at uh, MFF. So we had gone to MFF and we were having like a super awesome, I can't remember, I think it was Saturday night. We were all just hanging out and then like suddenly the fire alarm goes off and oh my God, we thought it was just like a drill at first and then it just doesn't stop. It just doesn't stop. And then the intercom goes off and it's like evacuate the building. And we we're like, uh, what? Why are we, why are we leaving the building? This is, this is freaky. We all get out and like, we didn't prepare for the cold. So we're, we're just like, okay, well, they're probably just clearing the building for a second. Several hours of standing outside later in the freezing cold, we end up going over to uh, one of our other friend's rooms, which was across the street at one of the other hotels and just kind of hunkering down for the evening. And I, I remember like at first everybody was like, oh, is like the hotel on fire or something? And then later on we found out it was like this chlorine bomb. That was the, the, the scary part is realizing that, you know, like something so chaotic can happen and you don't even realize it's happening at the time. You're just there. Have you ever lived in the countryside? Do you like the countryside? Well, yes, yes, I grew up. I grew up in the mountains. I grew up in a mountain town in uh, Colorado that we uh, moved to when I was in high school and it was like a town of 3,000 people. So it wasn't huge. Um, I liked it, but it was super isolating. It was like one of those places where you just really wish that um, you had friends that lived closer by. <laughs> um, that's pretty much, that's pretty much the core of it. It's just like, you're so far away from all your friends that it's like, uh, you know, like a 30 minute drive to just say hi to somebody. And that kind of sucks. So I ended up, you know, like hanging out on the internet a lot, which is actually kind of how I found the fandom. So yeah, in a weird roundabout way, that's how I found y'all. Oh, and that I guess that kind of answers that other question. How did you become a furry? Uh, well, <laughs> as it tends to go, furries, furries, uh, furries are, are made by the internet. So I became a furry basically by um, by exposure, I found that I really liked anthropomorphic art. I loved like films like Disney's Robin Hood, and those were all things that I just kind of like loved and obsessed over as a as a kid. Um, and then of course you discover the internet, and you're just like, hey, uh, I wonder if there's other people that draw this kind of stuff because I was obsessed with drawing like animal characters. And lo and behold, I found VCL, and I became a furry. So boom, hey, there it is. My disastrous, my. Uh, Oh my God, super awkward way of becoming a furry, VCL. There you go. Yeah. Do you read books? Yes, I read a lot of books. I think that if you're going to be a filmmaker, you have to both be uh, a writer and somebody who reads. 
somebody who consumes a lot of different uh, content because this is a way of um, really exploring different points of view. And I mean, like one of the things that I do on almost every film project is I keep a private journal. I, I write down everything that's been going on. I write down my notes and like time code stamps and stuff of like selects that I really like or quotes that I like from folks when I do interviews. So it, it's just one of those things. You write a lot, you read a lot, and of course you make movies. If you got a chance to go to Asian countries, which ones would you go to? Well, so when I was younger, when I was like, uh, you ready? You ready for me to date myself? Uh, so when I first got out of high school uh, in 2006, um, I went to China for a few months and it was a lot of fun. I went, I went with my grandparents and like my mom and we explored the country. And it was just a blast. It was a life-changing experience. But I have always wanted to see more of Asia. I want to see like Thailand. I want to see, um, I want to see Japan a lot, just because it's super awesome. I mean, like, who wouldn't want to go to Japan? I mean, like, I love everything that is Japan. I don't know. It's it's just it's a cool thing. Yeah. Did I see pandas in China? Uh, no, actually, I didn't see any pandas in China. I wanted to see some pandas, but most of my time was actually spent in cities. So when I was in China, I uh, flew into Shanghai, spent some time in Xi'an and Beijing. Um, and I think we had talked about going over to um, uh, like Tibet at the time, but like this was just before the Olympics were in China. Um, and so they kind of closed off Tibet to folks. I mean, it was a really strange, um, really strange experience. Like I had somebody literally, so I had a digital camera with me and I had somebody checking all the photos that I took. They called them a cultural attache, I think it was. And basically they were just like, hey, guess what? You can't take photos of that. You can only take photos of this. What was your most awkward moment so far uh, existing? <laughs> I'm just awkward by proxy. I, I mean, like, come on, y'all know me. I'm just like a weird, awkward person on the internet. That's just, that's just who I am. I mean, I could, I could try and make it even more awkward for you. Uh, how's that sound? Do I have a significant partner? By significant partner, I'm assuming you mean significant other, and yes, I do. So I've been married uh, for a long time now um, to my husband, Chip. My husband, Chip, is super amazing. He's super sweet. Uh, we met, oh goodness, like 12 or 13 years ago. We've been together that long and it's just been a wonderful, loving, sweet, beautiful relationship. I don't know, I'm just happy. Oh, here's a good one. Since you're a coyote, have you ever encountered a roadrunner? Well, I've seen a roadrunner. I've never encountered one. I've never chased one. I've never uh, had to go to Acme to um, buy any roadrunner traps, if that's what you're asking, so. Have you ever been to Texas? Yes, I go to Texas every year for Texas Furry Fiesta. It's one of my favorite cons. Uh, you should totally check it out if you haven't been. Uh, there's, I think there's like two events actually each year. It's Texas Furry Fiesta and Texas Furry Siesta, see? Uh, one's during the summer, one is kind of during the uh, winter slash spring. They're both a lot of fun. Um, they are two of my, like, like it's just like good times. Good times with good friends. I love it so much. Uh, who would win in a fight? A Wolverine, a Honey Badger, or a Tasmanian Devil? Well, I'm gonna just say Wolverine because I like the character Wolverine from X-Men. Um, actually, that's, that's uh, mostly just because I like Hugh Jackman. Don't judge me. When did I learn about the fandom? When did I learn about furries? Ooh, that's that's an easy one. I learned about furries in anime club. So I was like a vice president of the anime club in uh, high school. Uh, yeah, uh, awkward. I don't know. Is that is that awkward? I feel like that's awkward. And one of my friends was there and was like drawing, I think it was like a furry version of um, one of the characters from Stargate SG-1. And I was just like, whoa. What is that? And they're like, oh, it's a furry. And I'm like, aha, I have a name for it. This is brilliant. And so like I looked up furry and that's how I found VCL and that's how I kind of became a furry. And they, they helped me design my first persona, which was a black and white wolf named, guess what? Wolfie, <laughs> super creative, right? Durban Cheetah Wolf, um, that is a good question. Do you have any tips for starting and for YouTube? Yes, I have a lot of tips for starting for YouTube. First, stick with it. Uh, it's kind of a niche market. If this is something that you really wanna do, if this is the kind of market you wanna create content for, uh, just kind of stick with it. Make sure you focus in on topics that uh, 
empower you and interest you because guess what? Uh, if you don't, it, it's kind of, it kind of gets boring fast. But like, yeah, if you can, just try and figure out your, your area that you wanna focus on and talk about it and enjoy it. Aside from that, just make sure that you are kind of, um, focusing in and learning um, all sorts of, <laughs> of different kinds of like ways to make content. So like, like take for example, my channel. So, I mean, obviously I have like meme content, I have documentary content, um, I have Q and A content and stuff like that. So like, don't be, you know, like afraid to diversify and explore. Yeah, anything to say to a most, uh, oh, to adult trans women. So is there anything that I'd like to say to kind of like fellow trans women? Yes. I know this journey is a challenging one and there are a lot of ups and downs, but stay strong. Remember, you are not alone. There are a lot of us out there and we have a whole community here that you can kind of lean on and rely on if you need help. Um, sometimes also uh, just like a thing to keep in mind, stay away from the internet on occasion. Um, like, feel free to take breaks from it. You know, like Twitter can be a rough place if you're trans and the internet can be a rough place if you're trans. And I know a lot of socialization exists on the internet, but it's also kind of like one of those things you just gotta be willing to sometimes unplug for your own mental health. Are you using Windows 11, Windows 10, or Mac OS? Unfortunately, unfortunately, Content Mini, I'm using Windows 11. Uh, Windows 11 just self-installed on this thing and I kinda, I hate it. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Da, da. Do I like music? I love music. I actually played guitar, cello, and piano uh, growing up. I, I just, I love music so much. Um, I think one of my favorite genres is like 80s hair metal, just because of how ridiculous it is and gender bent and silly. Oh goodness, it's so much fun. You know, like Motley Crue or something. I, I mean, like, I know it's just kind of like a little trashy, but hey, Ash is short for trash. Just saying. Uh, do you think it's weird for a guy to use estrogen and want a feminine appearance? Um, well, I, I mean, you're you're welcome to do what you please with your body, I guess, is, is the best answer to that. Do what makes you happy. That's it. That's, that's plain and simple. Just do what makes you happy. What is your favorite country you've been to? Uh, I think I, I would actually have to say that one of my favorite countries I've ever been to is China, mostly just because it was such a uh, unique experience for me. Um, going there was different than anything else I could have ever really imagined. It was the most um, eye-opening experience, I think, of my youth. Um, it was a huge, huge deal. Um, uh, yeah, like it, it helped me really discover that there was so much more to the world. Yeah. Um, and if it wasn't for like China, I would say um, I really enjoyed going down to Mexico too. Mostly because Mexico is just such a beautiful country. It's warm and humid and oh my God, the air just smells like spice every time you walk down in the cities. It's just, it's wonderful. It's so beautiful. Um, in the future videos, do you want to use live 2D avatar mask or show face? I want to do all of the above um, right now. Right now I'm just doing the live 2D model because this is something that I spent a little bit of money on and I had a friend make for me and I wanted to get into streaming more and this is, this is just easier for me, I guess. Because it's easy, that's why. All right. Bye everyone, goodbye. The coyote says goodbye.